Okay, so I love this story so much because it shows you how hollow these anti-LGBTQ plus Republicans are. And I actually don't think that they really know the effect of the policies that they are producing. So um, we'll see a video here in a moment, but let me just give you a little bit of context. GOP lawmaker blasted by fellow Republican over proposed Missouri don't say gay law. So, I mean, these are popping up everywhere. Not necessarily that surprising, but the author of the bill, um, or I should say the sponsor of the bill, just cannot defend her position. So a Missouri lawmaker unloaded on a fellow GOP colleague. So on a fellow GOP colleague, presumably we have Republican on Republican violence here, which is always good to see uh, behind a bill modeled after Florida's Don't Say Gay Law. State Representative Ann Kelly sponsored House Bill 634, which would ban sexual classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties relating to sexual orientation or gender identity shall occur. But under questioning from GOP colleague Phil Christ Christofanelli, Kelly didn't appear to understand the implications of her own bill. So Krista Finelli, a conservative Republican who is openly gay, asked if under the law, Martha Washington could be identified as the nation's first president's wife. So that makes sense because it's always curious to see a Republican questioning their colleague if they are being homophobic. But here you have somebody who is self-interested. He's gay and he thinks that this is homophobic. First of all, Christo Finelli, you might want to leave the Republican Party if you are concerned about homophobia, but that's a different topic for a different day. Let's watch this exchange because it was just so incredible. In fact, let me uh, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see. Like I want to zoom in so you can see, but my my box is blocking it. So let's press play. I'm just going to read you the the language in your bill. No classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties relating to sexual orientation or gender identity shall occur. Um, lady, you mentioned George Washington. Who is Martha Washington? His wife. Under your bill, how could you mention that in a classroom? So to me, that's not sexual orientation. Really? So it's only really certain sexual orientations that you want prohibited from introduction you, in the classroom. Do you have language to make that better, to make it where you're not talking? Lady, I didn't introduce your bill. Okay. Uh, and I, I didn't write it. You wrote it. And so I'm asking what it means. Which sexual orientations do you believe should be prohibited from Missouri classrooms? We all have a moral compass. And my moral compass is compared with the Bible. Lady, I believe I during believe your testimony, you said that you didn't want teachers' personal beliefs entering the classroom, but it seemed a lot like your personal belief you would like to enter all Missouri classrooms. You can, you can believe something without, in, without, in, without putting that onto somebody by the way you behave. And you can have beliefs and morals and values that guide you through life. I, I don't dispute that, but I'm asking about the language of your bill and how it would permit the mention of the historical figure, Martha Washington. Could you explain that to me? So what does she, why, why is she famous? Is she famous because she's married with, to George Washington? It seems like that would be a relevant fact in her biography, yes. Could it be mentioned under the plain reading language of your bill? Is that a no? I, I, I don't know, sir. Okay. <laughs> that was incredible. And I love how um, when it came to the Bible portion, she's like, well, you can believe something without like pushing it on other people. Like I'm paraphrasing what she said, but um, you're literally passing a bill to push your religion on everyone by forcing queer people to be quiet in the classroom, go back into the closet, and you don't even understand the ways in which that same law that you're pushing will affect heterosexual couples. Because believe it or not, to say, this is my wife, your mommy and your daddy, you are introducing the concept of sexual orientation into the classroom. Is it in an age-appropriate manner? Yes. But they'll contend that if you were to say, this kid, Dylan, has two dads. Well, 
They think that's not age appropriate. Any and all LGBTQ plus uh, references need to be cleansed. But if you mention mommy and daddy, that's not sexual orientation. Lady, do you know what sexual orientation is or gender identity is? By him saying lady to you, that alone is invoking gender identity, right? To say Mr., Mrs., to use pronouns, that is invoking gender identity. We do it so frequently that we don't even realize when we're doing it, right? But this imbecile right here thinks that she is protecting children by banning discussions of sexual orientation in classrooms, not realizing that, oops, that's going to apply to straight people too. If we're actually trying to interpret the bill as objectively as possible, that's going to affect straight people. And I would encourage any single teacher in these states to comply with these new laws as maliciously as possible. There was one teacher in Florida that um, was basically, since you can't invoke gender identity, she said, okay, well, I'm just going to refer to all of my, my students using gender neutral pronouns. That's what we're going to do. That's the way you want it. This is what the law says. So I'm just being cautious here. I didn't write the law you did. So I'm just doing what you want me to do. I think that that's what you really need to do because these idiots don't realize that what they're doing will affect them too. Now, you might ask, well, why why don't they just say gay people specifically? Why are they vague saying sexual orientation? Well, first and foremost, you can't because that's unconstitutional. You can't target a group on the basis of their sexual orientation or any other immutable characteristic. Um, now, second of all, they write these laws very purposefully vague, all to make sure that it has the broadest reach imaginable, meaning that if you don't really know how to interpret a particular law, odds are you're going to play it safe to avoid litigation. So you'd be overly cautious because if you write these bills with a level of specificity that lets these teachers know what is and isn't appropriate, then you're not accomplishing what you ultimately want to accomplish. So you be as vague as possible, as far reaching as possible. And that's how you, in their view, eliminate sexual orientation out of the classroom. But if you're going to get rid of gay sexual orientation or bisexual sexual orientation, you got to get rid of straight sexual orientations as well. So that means we don't get to hear about Eleanor Roosevelt. We don't get to hear about anyone's husband or wife because all of that is tantamount to invoking sex and sexual orientation in the classroom. So, yeah, I love to see them questioned about this because these people are absolute rubes. They're just bigoted. They're ignorant. And that's it. There's there's nothing more to say about this. They're just fucking stupid, period, end of story. And when you just apply even a minimal amount of scrutiny to their beliefs, they crumble. They can't defend it because it's just hate in the purest form.